So encoding with X.265 and FFmpeg, recognize that there's a bifurcated command structure. Some are just like other codecs, and those are these parameters here. G is GOP size, keyframe minimum is the minimum keyframe interval, bitrate video, max rate, all those are the same. And some other parameters have to be behind the X.265 params, otherwise they won't work. And these are the ones in red here. So how do you know which ones are like other codecs and which ones need to be put in the X.265 params field? Well, you've got to pay attention when you're encoding and watch for yellow error messages, which indicates that there's an error, but the command string will still process, or a red message where you can't avoid it because it's just going to stop the encoding. And then once you're done with that, verify the output. Now let me tell you what I mean. So in this command string, I put the profile equal main 10 behind x.265 params. And I noticed that there was a yellow message coming unknown profile, or unknown option profile. And that tells me that FFmpeg doesn't recognize the command string here. So when I put it here, not in the x.265 params field, but as a separate entry, there was no error message. It was fine. And I put it here in the second command string, and everything seemed to work great. The problem was, when I checked in media info, I noticed that it wasn't main 10. And we'll look at how to produce main 10 in a moment. But just because you set the profile in the command string doesn't mean that you're going to get the profile that you select. And we see that here. We've got the main, not the main 10. Now there's another view in Media Info that's even more helpful than this view here, and that's the HTML view. So here's Media Info as I typically open it up. And, and all the commands that you used in the FFmpeg command script are here, but they're very difficult to see because they're all on one line. On the other hand, if you go view HTML, you get this view here, which you can use to check whether or not FFmpeg recognized all the options that you selected. So here are a bunch of the options that we selected. We selected reference frames equals 5. Yep, that's right. Keyframe interval is 48. Yes, that's right here. Keyframe minimum 48 as well. B frames 3, B adapt 2, 3, 2, and data rates, 35, 75, 75, and it looks like we're hitting on all cylinders. But until you actually do this check, you have no way of knowing if you input the right commands and if you're getting the desired result. So let me show you what I mean. I've copied this command string, and I'm going to drop it into FFmpeg here, and this will take a moment to do. And when it's done, we can scroll up and we see unknown option profile, which is what we see here. So whenever you execute a new command, be sure to watch the command window. And then once you've completed the command, once you've, you've completed the encode, go to this view in Media Info or another tool to verify that you got what you're looking to get. The other comment for me is keep it simple. You know, I showed you these x.265 params because it's important that you know this command structure, particularly for a lesson or a, a sub-lesson we'll get to in a moment. But I typically don't use those for FFmpeg. If you don't set these, FFmpeg will simply use these parameters from the preset that you choose, and typically that's the way that I go. So I'm not suggesting that you need to insert the number of reference frames, B frames, or choose the B adopt adoption strategy. I'm just saying, in some instances, if you need to include an x.265 specific command, you may have to use this command structure. And we'll see an example of that in a moment. So profiles are an option you're going to have to set, irrespective of which HEBC codec you apply. So what are profiles and why do they exist? Profiles enable publishers to access different encoding tools, and these are the tools here, to balance encoding time, encoding quality, and the playback CPU. And there are two profiles available for publishers today, main and main 10, the version 2 codec will use more of these features. You see that none of these features are used in either the main or main 10 codec. What's the difference between the two? The bit depth. Main is 8-bit, main 10 is 8 to 10-bit. This is targeted for 8-bit content and 8-bit displays. This is targeted towards 10-bit content and HDR displays. Now, as a general rule, if you have 8-bit source video, you'll probably want to use main output. And if you have 10-bit source video, you'll probably want main 10. And fortunately, FFmpeg makes this really easy to do. Now, I do want to point out that 10-bit does not equal HDR or high dynamic range video. HDR is a whole different topic beyond the scope of this lesson and this tutorial. Just understand that all HDR is 10-bit, but not all 10-bit is HDR. 
So here's how you specify the profile, and you do it by not specifying the profile. Rather, you change the pixel format, and FFmpeg will automatically change to main or main 10, depending on what the pixel format is. So if you've got 8-bit video, you need to change the pixel format to 10-bit video, and then FFmpeg will automatically use the main 10 profile. You don't need to use the profile setting in the command string. And the reverse is true if you want to convert 10-bit video to 8-bit output and use the main 10 profile. You change the pixel format to 8-bit, and then FFmpeg will automatically use the main profile. Let's take a look at that. So here we're encoding with x.265. We're, we're converting 8-bit content to 10-bit output, or main 10 output. So here's our two-pass command string. Here we're changing the pixel format to 10-bit. And this is 8-bit source. And by using this command string, we get main 10 output. And you'll notice that I don't set the profile anywhere in here. You basically change the pixel format, and FFmpeg will automatically use the profile appropriate for the output bit depth. And then here's the reverse. We've got 10-bit input here, as you can see here. And we're converting the pixel format to 8-bit format, and FFmpeg will automatically convert that to main output. So what are presets and why did they exist? Presets were created by x.265 developers to allow people encoding to make simple trade-offs in terms of encoding time and encoding quality. So ultra-fast, as you probably can guess, is the high-speed, low-quality alternative, where placebo is the very low-speed, high-quality alternative. And if you go to this URL here, you'll see these are all the decisions that relate to an individual preset. So if I choose slower, as we will in a moment, slower is number seven, then all of these options are selected for all of these configuration options. And this is going to result in a longer encode time, but better output quality. Now, if you don't specify a preset in the command string, FFmpeg will use the medium preset when encoding to the x.265 codec. So you don't see a preset in any of the command strings we've looked at before. And then in each case, FFmpeg encoded using the medium preset. So how do you choose the right preset for you? Now, we know medium is the default here. And what I did was try and find the trade-off between quality and encoding time. So what I did was I have eight files here that I've used a long time, started with my book, Encoding by the Numbers. And I encoded them using all of the different x.265 presets from ultra-fast to placebo. And all the files, all the presets. And then I measured the VMAF quality. And what we're seeing is red is always the worst. And as you would guess, ultra-fast is typically going to be the worst. Placebo is mostly the best, but we see some sprinklings here. And what's interesting is that in terms of average quality, the super-fast at 95.30 is actually higher average quality than very fast and faster. And then even fast as well, 95.3 and 95.11. And then it starts to go up. So the medium preset is actually a little bit better. And then it goes up to 96.36, 96.44, 96.45, and then 96.42, which is actually down on average from the very slow preset. So how do we make a decision about which preset is best for us? This is the medium preset. And what we're doing here is we're showing the percentage of encoding time. So this is the placebo encoding time. And this is the percentage of each preset of that encoding time. So the medium preset takes about 1.5% of the placebo encoding time. And this is the overall quality. So we're seeing that the super fast preset delivers 97.93% of the overall quality according to VMAP. And then as we saw, it goes down, down. It's still a little bit down. And then it goes up to 98.48 with the medium preset. Now, if you're looking for higher quality than, than the medium preset, if you go to the slow preset, you're essentially tripling encoding time to get one VMAF point. And that's probably going to be worth it because the increase in, in encoding time isn't that dramatic. But over here, you're going from 1.5 to 13. That's you know eight or nine times the encoding time. This probably isn't going to be worth it. I typically use the slow preset. A lot of people use the medium preset. 
you know, medium is reasonable for quality and throughput, super fast if you want good quality and fast throughput, and then slow for very good quality, reasonable throughput. Most people tend not to use these in a two-pass VOD encoding scenario, but they will use those in a live scenario where you might not be able to achieve 30 frames per second if you use the medium preset or certainly not the slow preset. How do you set the preset? You set it with the preset switch here. So here's the preset is slower. Now we saw that the slower preset had B frame settings of 8. So once I encoded with this preset here, I would go back to Media Info and I would make sure that at least one or two of the settings that I assume are going to be related to the preset that I chose are correct. I want to make sure that I implemented it correctly. Now there's one more issue you need to be considering if you're encoding with the X.265 preset, and that's closed GOPS. Now closed GOPS are a very obscure setting. You can read all about it in this article here, this URL here. But as a general rule, you want closed GOPS to promote smooth switching in adaptive bitrate video. So if you're producing for ABR distribution, you want to make sure that your X.265 video has a closed GOP. Now, GOPs are closed by default with X.264, but for some reason they're open by default with X.265. So you need again, once again, to close the GOPs for all videos encoded with X.265 for ABR deployment. How do you do that? Use this switch here, which has to be after X.265 params. And if you do that and you check your file with Media Info, you'll see no open GOP here telling you that you've achieved the right result. And then this is our final command string for X.265 and FFmpeg.